That's why you are alive this morning. And that's why I'm alive this morning. That's why you are seeing me, even though I'm not seeing you, but I'm seeing you in the spirit. At least I'm seeing your name. Let's praise him one more time. We have a God who never fails. We have a God who never fails. We have a God who never fails. Who we never fail, who never fail, forevermore. That we are alive in the land of the living, that we are breathing, that our eyelids are fluttering this morning, that I'm shaking my head like some Indians would do in their movie, and that you are alive and your eyes are fluttering, you are looking at me. It means we are not better than the ones that died yesterday. We are not better than the people that died, oh, but because God, in his infinite mercy, has given you and I another day to better the things that we did wrong. Let's praise him again. We have a God who never fails. We have a God who never fails. We have a God who never fails. Who we never fail, who never fails forevermore. Some people are looking for money, 
to buy even if it's just one bean cake a loaf of bread some people are looking for money to buy a bag of pure water like we say in Nigeria that is what that that is in the sachet for them to be able to drink but I believe that you and I we have all those and then we have money for data to come online oh my goodness we have a God who never fails we have a God who never fails we have a God who never fails who we never fail who never fails forever more we have a God that gave wisdom to the creators of the internet that way we can connect even though we are in different places at the same time we are from different countries but yet we can connect only God give it that wisdom let's praise him one more time we have a God who never fails we have a God who never fails we have a God who never fails who will never fail who never fail forever more come on we have a God who did not allow you and I to hear bad news yesterday or in the course of last week and who did not allow me to die in the aircraft that was hovering in the air when I was coming back to my station from where I had gone to work oh my god we have a God who never fails we have a God who never fails we have a God who never fails who we never fail who never fails forevermore the pilot was saying to us that we're in the aircraft that another plane developed a technical fault and that's why we are delayed from landing but people in the airplane with me were saying no he was saying that to dissuade our mind from panicking even though people were panicking but at least to calm us down people are saying how is it that he knew that another plane was having a technical fault and not our own plane but then whether it was our plane or it was another plane God took over and ensure that the pilot applied wisdom and we landed safely eventually i have a god who never fails i have a god who never fails we have a god who never fails who we never fails who never fails forevermore the word, the word of God says, it says we should not be afraid of the terror of the night or the pestilence that walketh in darkness. Brothers and sisters, do you realize that perpetrators of evil were carrying out their evil activities in the course of while you and I were snoring? <laughs> and do you realize also in the course of the darkness, all manners of diseases are breeding and being groomed and a lot of things are also happening in our bodies but God ensured that it did not come to pass and he ensured that we did not die in our sleep and we did not die in that accident that the enemies have plotted come on can you join me and sing that song one more time to him to give him praise we have a God who never fails we have a God who never fails we have a God who never fails who we never fail who never fails forevermore I prophesy to you this morning with the Holy Ghost anger I say you will not die before your time that untimely death that the enemy have you know pushed out, sent out, enchanted on their evil shrine. I stand on the altar of God, the altar of my praying. 
you know mantle this morning I decree those enchantment for untimely death is cancelled in the name of Jesus because there is power in the Word of God Jesus speaking in John chapter 6 63 he said it is a spirit that quickened the flesh profited nothing the words that I speak to you he says they are life and they are spirit they are spirit and they are life which means the word of god when we believe it when we apply it when we reason it or when we believe in it it has power to do and undo and this morning i prophesy once again you will leave and you will not die you will fulfill the number of your days you will fulfill your purposes you will finish your race just like jesus finished his race and says it is finished you will finish well in jesus powerful name amen and amen and amen the word of god says in the book of first john 3 8 he say he that seen it is of the devil for the devil seen it from the beginning for this purpose the son of god the son of man was made manifest that he may destroy the works of the devil my father my god i come before you this morning you are the author the bishop of my soul and the souls of your children who are online father destroy the work of the devil for you are manifest oh lord to wash it away to pummel the enemy to ensure that he is defeated to ensure that he is made null and void my lord and my god every work of the devil that wants to hinder us today's ministration let it be frustrated in the name of jesus every work of the devil and every movement of the devil to stop your children from comprehending what is about to be said in this country friends let it be frustrated I saturate the whole atmosphere where I am and where your children are with the blood of Jesus and I cleanse us once again with the blood of Jesus for you are a holy God and without holiness no one can come before you father we make ourselves worthy to come before you we approach the throne of grace this morning without fear because we know that your mercy endured forever thank you for forgiving us our sins thank you for showing us mercy thank you for your love thank you for your preservation and thank you for what you're about to do for we know that you're going to brood upon your words and they will come alive this morning thank you for our ministry angels who are on God to perfect all that concerns us my Lord and my God I totally decrease and you increase and take over today's ministration in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost with that I declare this meeting open in Jesus powerful name amen and amen good morning good morning to all of you i see all of you and i am delighted i am i am i am joyous and i say god bless you for coming in there's so many other platforms people online this morning that you could join but you decided to come here this morning I appreciate you I and the Holy Trinity God the Father God the Son and God the Holy Spirit are my battalion of angels and the 24 elders will welcome you and we say we don't take you for granted that you are here this morning that you packed your sheep here come on you are docked right here I say God bless you and in your first timer please give us the tumble sign you know each time I use us I'm not talking about just me alone because I'm not here by myself I'm here with the Holy Trinity and my battalion of angels because I got a lot of them in quantum you know guarding me and joining me to do this ministration so it's your first time of coming in give us the thumb up sign give us a thumb up sign so that we can appreciate you because we don't take it for granted that you joined this morning come on give us a thumb up sign so we can use a few minutes you know to appreciate you and while we are waiting for those that uh, you know who are uh, who just joined in for the first time and uh, you are a faithful one please could you use the moment to begin to press your share button and begin to invite your friends and foes come on don't be selfish let others be a partaker of this holy meal please press your share button press your share button press your share button SZK77 God bless you 677 right yeah God bless you it's your first time we appreciate you fantastic lady J God bless you for coming in oh my god we thank you we thank you we appreciate you we don't take it for granted that you stop this morning to come online god bless you um prince uh 
EJ Boss, God bless you. Come for coming in. God bless you. I believe God has a word in season. And for you, this is your online Monday morning prayer conference. Instagram live. It happens every 6 a.m. TG. Is it Bay? Yeah, Tobe, God bless you. Thank you, Masha Brown, for clapping for them. There's your online, um, oh my God, uh, this Sila, Sila859. Uh, this is your first time. Oh, God bless you. God bless you. Oh, God bless you. Your first time, sorry. Oh, is, is that your first time? You know, uh, I should pray, uh, pray for you. Pray uh, pray for your right, what? Right leg. All right, we're going to do that in the course of time. You know, this is your online Monday morning prayer conference, Instagram live, like I was trying to say earlier. It happens every Monday, 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. Nigerian time. And we are practically three years. This has been going on for three years. Three solid years. Yes, three solid years that we've been doing this. So it's not a chit-chat form. And then um, I am your humble servant, Apostle Dr. Eukarya Angunobi. Some people say, oh, is she ordained? Yes, I've been ordained more than, you know, close to 12 years ago. Yes. Uh, and I've gone to different countries around the world preaching the gospel and I've lost count of authors here in Nigeria that I've gone to preach. So you want confirmation, please thank you Grace for, you know, welcoming them and uh, thank you, thank you for giving them a rose. God bless you god bless you you know i appreciate you so if you if you go back on uh, go down on my you know uh, instagram uh, uh page and uh, much more on my facebook fan page my facebook uh, not facebook fan page now i'm talking about facebook proper uh my facebook proper is you know verify it has a blue badge just like my instagram page has a blue badge when you go down there you will be able to see back 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 close to 12 years ago my ordination pictures and you will see all the places i've gone to preach different countries and i am saying it with all humility this morning for the first time is i've preached in usa i preach in london i preach in norway i preach in sweden I've preached in Spain, I have preached in Ghana, Togo, Cameroon, Senegal, I've lost count of altars here in Nigeria, I've also preached in Ghana, you know, I've lost count of altars here in Nigeria that I've gone to preach, you know, so it's the grace of God, you know, and uh, if you've not been hearing, it is because you've not been following, but then and now that you're following, you'll be up to date, so God bless you, God bless you, yes, um, uh, can an actress be a preacher, yes, if you make yourself available, if you study to show thyself approved, am I communicating, yes, you know, over time I've done I'm gone to different kinds of school from my first degree, my master's, you know, Bible college, you know, my, you know, research and then having my PhD. Come on, I've, 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 I, I have so many certificates, you know, to, to show, you know, that I've studied over time in preparation for the work that God has given to me. So while you are here and for those who are joining for the first time, I blow you the holy kiss and I say you are welcome and for the faithful ones who have been with us riding you know on this journey over the years I also blow you a holy kiss this morning and I appreciate you I see that you're watching from Nairobi Kenya God bless you God bless you God bless you so much thank you so much be that whole you're watching from Kenya God bless you God bless you God bless you and um and in the course of while we started I think I saw somebody write, is that your hair? Oh, I don't think that's the first thing you should start, you know, with on this lady. But I think that's where your mind went to. Well, it's not my hair. I wish it was my hair. Oh, I wish it was my hair. It's not my hair. But then um, it's, it's one of those, um, you know, wigs, you know, that is done. I think it's some kind of kinky stuff that is done that looks like, you know, the African hair. Any, any, uh, any, did I get that? You're watching from Houston, Texas. God bless you. You know, um, I hear the 1497. You're watching from, oops, I miss all that. Oh my goodness. Some people are watching from Bangkok. Whoa, 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 whoa. I appreciate you. You're from Ghana. God bless you. God bless you. So like I was saying, it's just one of those kinky, you know, uh, African looking hair kind of wigs, you know, that you 
we do and it makes you you know uh, it looks like our hair okay yes thank you for the holy kiss back i receive <laughs> thank you thank you <laughs> you know so I, I i i dressed it up myself you know you're watching from dubai i just saw from italy oh my god dallas texas Ooh, oh my god i see that you're watching from dallas texas my goodness my goodness that is awesome thank you so much for coming in and um like i was saying so i dress it up to look you know as closely as possible to natural and i know that you like it thank you so much thank you so much thank you thank you thank you so much i appreciate you watching from maryland love you uh sayende i think did i miss that uh is it uh ayende or ayandi 497 walking from maryland is it maryland in nigeria in lagos state or is it maryland in the usa well whichever one it is god bless where you are god prosper you god take you higher and like i was saying earlier if you make yourself available god can use you yes in this end time we find that god is raising a great army you know to do the work am i communicating so this is your online monday morning prayer conference like i said before and uh i am grateful we are grateful that you are here so we pray we read the word of god and i preach the word of god as god gives me the grace okay and god bless you so 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 much so this morning I am reading from the King James Version. So you have your Bible, King James Version, but if you don't have your Bible, then uh, you can do yourself a word of good by getting, uh, uh, okay, Maryland uh, in the USA. Oh my God, God bless you. God bless you, God bless you, okay? So you get a, a, a notebook, a jotter, like you call it, and then get a pen, uh, and uh, did I, what did I hear? He's preaching Nedu. What did you just say? I missed that. You need to know my church. Okay. You send me your DM. Well, we haven't started the physical church. So what we're still doing is the online church. And then uh, you want to be a partner, then you can just DM me in my, you know, Instagram DM. And I'm going to read and we can talk about it. Okay. Maybe you want to be a partner concerning this vision. Why not? Guy, you're welcome. Nobody can do this work alone. Am I coming this morning so with the you know King James version you can get a pen and a notation that's a notebook so you can jot down the scriptures and when I am done you can read up the scriptures by yourself to confirm okay so we are reading first of all this morning from the book of Philemon Philemon P H I L E M O N I'm reading from chapter 1 I might communicate as a matter of fact Philemon is just one chapter <laughs> so that chapter 1 1 chapter verse 14 so join me as I read and um, you know that I love you right nobody told you I love you I love you <laughs> I love you so so much for being here always coming online I love you so join me Philemon says but without thy mind would I do nothing that thy benefit should not be as it were of necessity but willingly Philemon 114 now we're going to read from the book of Luke Luke 22 and that is 42 and I read it says saying father if thou be willing remove this cup from me nevertheless not my will but thy will not thy will not you know not my will but thy will brothers and sisters saints of God this morning I am ministering preaching teaching on the team what prayer does doesn't do I repeat that again what prayer doesn't do or what prayer does not do but the team proper is what prayer doesn't 
do. And um, in the word that we read in the book of Philemon, that 114, a word sprung out if you were following and the word that sprung out to my mind when I was studying is the word mind M I N D mind and I took my time to read up again from the dictionary what is the meaning of the word mind and I'm gonna read it out to you as I got it from the Marian Webster's you know English dictionary it says mind is defined as a part of a person that thinks reasons feels and remembers please put that at the back of your mind then with regards to the topic or team today which says what prayer doesn't do there are thousands and millions of definitions of a word prayer but then let me just read out for the purposes of this conference the definition that i got of the word prayer in the dictionary it says prayer is defined as an address in parenthesis as a petition to God with a capital G O D or a God small G G O D's with a small G in word or thought so prayer is an address in parenthesis as a petition to God or a God in word or thought remember what the word mind says say that part of a person that reasons that things that feels that remembers am i communicating so it also says that prayer is an earnest request or wish earnest request or a wish now everyone believes that the act of praying or prayer changes things definitely it does but then you see there is a part of you know the relation of praying or the act of praying you know that has to do or better still that affiliates to the word will will as in w-i-l-l -L, or rather or better still what we know as the mind am i communicating so there is a part of praying that has to do with the mind or the will yes we understand that prayer is petition to god in thought or in word am i communicating and we believe as believers that prayer changes things but we need to understand look at the scripture that we read first our opening scripture philemon and i read it again he said but without thy mind would i do nothing am i communicating and then uh, when we look at the book of luke 22 42 that we read jesus spoke and saying you know say father if thou be willing remove this cup from me nevertheless not my will but thy will so we can notice in what jesus said he had a wish he had a request he had a will of his own and in the wish that comes from his mind that has to do with his wish am i communicating this morning he was wishing and praying 
that the cup will pass over him. This was the situation that he found himself into just before his arrest and betrayal. Am I communicating this morning? Just before, because he knew he was going to be arrested, he knew he was going to be betrayed, and he knew he was going to be crucified. But you see, the human part of him, the part that feels, oh my God, the part that feels pain, was saying to God Almighty, he said, can this cup pass over me? He was praying just like all of us do not want to affiliate or associate with pain or anything that wants to trouble us. We want to run away from pain and troubles of life. Same thing, Jesus being in the form, God Almighty being in the form of man. Because so many people, most of the time, they confuse Jesus and they don't want to know whether it's Jesus or God Almighty or the Holy Spirit. But I know I've taken time over time in this ministry and in this conference to be able to expand that God is three in one. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Am I communicating? But that is not what we're focusing on here this morning. So we are talking about the fact that Jesus, you know, who is in the form of a man, who took the fleshly form of you and I, and you and I having our fleshly form, we have feelings in it. And then uh, the feelings of enjoyment and feelings of pain, Jesus was also feeling the same thing. So knowing that his betrayer will also be tantamount to suffering and feeling pain, he was trying to renege and was telling God, oh, please take this cup away from me. Do not let me go through the pain. Do not let me go through the trial. Do not let me go through the suffering because he knew that it was going to be excruciating. It was his wish. It was his will. It was in his mind. Am I communicating? But there's something that he did. He realized that, that he was not here for his own will and not for his own wish. He was here according to the will of God. So that's why he said, not my will, but thy will. He wanted to will it. He wanted to wish it. He was praying for it. He said it in words. And he said, oh my God, if you could just take it away. But he realized he needed to succumb to a higher will so we can say he succumbed to the mind of God just like God said to us in that word in Philemon 1 14 he said but without your mind would I do nothing am I communicating so you see Jesus understood that for everything even though he prayed but he realized there's something that is superior to prayer. And that has to do with the relations of the mechanism of prayer. That has to do with the act of prayer. That before prayer, uh, far above it and beyond it, there's what he called the mechanism that, you know, regulates prayer. Am I communicating? And that mechanism that regulates prayer is what we call the wheel. There is a wheel. Am I communicating here, child of God, this morning? So... So if we notice the operating mechanism behind the act of praying, which is the wheel or what you and I can call the mind, we will realize that yes, we pray, but if there is no wheel, if our mind is not there, nothing will happen. Am I communicating this morning? So you see, far and above desiring and praying there is a will meaning that prayer can be done for someone or someone can engage in prayer but if their mind is not on the prayer the prayer is useless am i communicating here now which also now goes down to tell us something that when your mind is not on what you are doing or what you are about to do, nothing that you're doing will be successful. Am I communicating? That is why in that Philemon 1.14, expressly God says, without your mind, I can do nothing. And Jesus, I want to emphasize again, he said, take this cup away from me. If thou art willing, O oh Lord, if thou art willing, Father, take it away. But not my will, but time be done. Am I communicating here this morning? So we need to understand expressly that there is a place where prayer comes in. 
and there is a place of the wheel of the mind. Am I communicating? Let us sink in for a second. There is a place for prayer and there is a place for the wheel or the mind. So we need to understand this morning that let it be eradicated from our mind that prayer is not the be it all and the key to the all round success or successes of a believer. Am I communicating? Yes, we say prayer is a key, prayer is a key, prayer is the master key. That's a song that's been sung. Say, Jesus started with prayer and ended with prayer. Prayer is the master key. Yes, prayer is the master key. We need to understand that prayer basically is the act of showing reverence to our God Almighty. Prayer is the act of us showing our devotion and absolute obeisance to the King of Kings. Am I communicating? And we cannot eradicate the place of prayer in the life of a believer or in the life of a Christian. Am I communicating? Because that is what makes us to relate and associate and show fellowship with our God because our God wants to fellowship with us. But we need to understand that there are certain keys that we need to understand to have in our life to be able to operate well because most of the time there's something that Christians forget and that is what the Word of God says in the book of Galatians 3 verse 1 you say oh foolish Galatians who has bewitched you so the Word of God is saying the people of the Galatians at that time were foolish because if they were not foolish, they would not be doubting how Jesus suffered and how Jesus came and all the things he had gone through to suffer for our sake. Just like some people in this time are acting in ways that are bizarre and thinking that Jesus does not exist. Some people tell us and you see in lots of places, some people say the Bible is just a fictional story. All those things don't exist. But then if you check out what has been going on in the world, you will see that there are archaeological you know, discoveries that shows that all the places that are in the Bible exist in real life. So with that, brothers and sisters, I submit to you this morning that prayer doesn't cancel ignorance. Rather, what cancels ignorance is the acquisition of knowledge. That is why the Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, the very first part of it, it says, show thyself approved. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that is not ashamed of his work, rightly dividing the word of truth. Am I communicating here this morning? So you want to get knowledge? Prayer is not what cancels it, but when you study, when you research and find out the where's and the what's and the why's and the how's of things, how it's been done, then you will have knowledge is not when you pray from morning to night. Am I communicating this morning? So what cancels, you know, ignorance is not prayer, but what cancels ignorance is knowledge. Just like so many people, ladies, you know, do not realize that they can start losing their eggs or their eggs can start getting weak from the age of late 30s and then early 40s and then uh, some are still waiting until they are 45 before they get married and just like I preached some time ago you know some men do not also realize that their spermatozoa get weak but if they have knowledge and not prayer they will understand that they need to start running while the sun is still out for Jesus was speaking and saying I will do the work of my father while it's still the time. He said, nine time comet when no man can work. So if people had wisdom, they had knowledge and not praying, they would know that prayer doesn't cancel ignorance. But what cancels ignorance is the acquisition of knowledge, researching and finding out things that are 
reasonable or that are unreasonable that are responsible or that are irresponsible so prayer doesn't cancel laziness prayer doesn't cancel foolishness prayer doesn't cancel rashness prayer doesn't cancel jealousy prayer doesn't cancel gluttony prayer does not cancel crassness prayer does not cancel envy prayer does not cancel sleeping too much am i communicating what rather will change things is the ability for one to wake up and make a conscious deliberate decision from the wheel of their mind that things will change am i communicating so one needs to make a conscious decision and have a strength of will to say i need this thing to change i want this situation to change so what cancels and changes illicit behaviors illicit characters characters that are unbecoming is the strength of will that we apply to it when we make up our mind and say you know what i want this thing to change so if you have a fearful mind you need to say to your mind and have a strength of will and say no longer will i be afraid i'm not going to be afraid of that situation for god has not given me the spirit of fear but of love of power and of sound mind am i communicating so it is the strength of will the strength of your mind that changes things it is not prayer Am I communicating this morning? So I submit to you, my brothers and sisters, this is the time for you to have a change of mind and realize that you need to wake up from your slumber and realize that prayer doesn't cancel illicit behavior. It doesn't cancel illicit character. It doesn't cancel things that are not in the will of God. It is you that will make up your mind and say, you know what? Enough is enough. So that is why most of the time when we hear, especially some time ago, you know, the, the internet was going viral with stories of people saying, you know, a woman snatched a man from another man. Hear me, child of God this morning. Hear me, servants of God and saints of God. Nobody snatches anybody from anyone if a woman decides to go out of their wedding it is because she has made up her mind a long time if a man decides to walk away from his marriage he has made up his mind a long time if a man decides to cheat on his wife he decided to cheat in his mind before he started to cheat it is a wheel a decision that he made deliberately if a woman decides to cheat on the husband it is a wheel that she made up her mind to do am i communicating this morning so you see anything that is being done it comes first of all from the mind that is why god is speaking in that book of philemon 140 he said but without your mind i can do nothing so it starts from the mind everything starts from the mind is not a prayer yes i can pray for you to change but if you don't put it in your mind to change nothing will happen we can lay hands on you if we lay legs on you and lay bodies on you until you decide in your mind i want a change i can prophesy to you and say it's gonna be well with you but if you don't do well in your business if you don't studiously you know do things just like the bible says show thyself approve a workman rightly dividing the work am i communicating just like the bible says in the book of proverbs 22 verse 29 it says see as thou a man diligently in his work he will stand before kings and not before me men so most of the time when you are saying, my business is not doing well, have you asked yourself, are you located in the place that you should be located? Do you have the goods that are needed in that place? Are you selling at a price that is out of the reach of the people? So you need to reconsider, just like the Bible says, consider your ways. The Bible says in the book of Malachi, it says, consider your ways. So consider your way this morning and ask yourself, it's not about prayer. You are a woman. You want to have a baby. You want to get pregnant, but you don't sleep with your husband. You don't allow your husband to sleep with you. You are a man. You want to have a baby, but you don't sleep with your wife. How would she conceive? Do you think she's going to be another Mary? 
Come on now, there are certain things prayer does not do. And there's something prayer cannot do. What prayer cannot do is what we are talking about this morning. You are a student. You don't read your book. You pray from morning to night. I say, I'm going to pass my exam. You are a man most miserable. You are a foolish person as a matter of fact, as the Bible says. You need to study. You need to read. You need to research for you to be able to pass your exams. Just like some time ago, I went to the POS agent like we have in Nigeria and I wanted to transfer some, you know, uh, uh, little amount of money to some organization. And there were some people before me and I had to wait. And then while I was waiting, there was another woman, an elderly woman suddenly came from nowhere. And then while they started to answer me, she started shouting, oh, oh my God, oh my God. Meanwhile, this woman was dressed piously. No makeup on. She covered her head from hair to toe, looking pious. And she was like, oh, I want to go to church. I want to go to church. You push your hand, you know, answer me. I'm in a hurry. And everybody turned and was looking at this elderly woman. And they had to tell her, mama, what is your problem? Did you not see people here on the queue before you got here? You need to wait and take your time. You're busy saying you're going to church. If you knew you wanted to go to your service early, shouldn't you have come earlier? You're not exhibiting the character of a Christian because a Christian needs to understand what is humility, what is, you know, patience, and what is love, and what is taking turn by turn. People started preaching to her. People started talking to her. And I also had to put a word. And I said, Mama, you just embarrassed us saying that you are going to church. Because the attitude you just put up now is that of crassness. Because crassness means being rude and being insensitive. You know, I say you are just being rude to everybody that is here. You met people online or rather on ground here before you. So you should take time and wait for your time. Or what you should have done is to implore and beg the people, you know, before you. And say, please, can any one of you allow me to take their turn? Because I am going, uh, you know, to, to service and I'm almost late. I say you didn't apply that method, but rather you're busy shouting. They don't want to answer me. They don't want to answer me. Why don't you want to answer me? That's not the way a Christian should do things. So you see, she will be going to church and wanting to pray. But what is her attitude? So as many times as possible, Christians have this delusion in their mind and think that being a Christian is the act of praying, the act of praying in tongues, you know, the act of singing, the act of falling on the ground, the act of rolling on the ground, the act of crying. No! What shows that you're a Christian is your character, your ability to subdue your mind, your ability to put your mind to work, your ability to know what you're doing at every point in time, at every given time, to know is it in the will of God. That is why I need to read us a scripture this morning, you know, when we look at the book of uh, First Peter chapter 2. You know, 22, and I'm going to read it and uh, look at what uh, Jesus said, uh, you know, was saying to, you know, uh, and I read, you know, uh, I read it. It says uh, that's uh, 2, uh, 2, 22, 1 Peter 2, and it says, no, 15, I want to read, sorry, 15. It says, so is the will of God that with well doing, ye may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men god is speaking to us in this scripture first peter i mean second peter rather uh first peter rather sorry chapter two chapter two that's what i want to say you know and that is verse 15 15 it says so is the will of god that will well doing with well doing ye may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men so as a christian god is admonishing us here that it is when we do well, when we act well, when we behave well, that is how we subdue the criticisms of people. The you know, ignorant talk of people who are not knowledgeable. Because if you say you're a Christian and you don't behave well, if you say you're a Christian and your character is smelling, then you don't show the example that Christ has given to us. Because the reason why Christ came is to give us example on how to behave, on how to live, on how to really relate with people am i communicating we are not meant to act crass 
am I communicating? So if you even look at it, look at it, that same, you know, chapter, you know, two of first Peter, I read verse 25, it says, For ye were a sheep going astray, but are now returned unto the shepherd and bishop of your souls. So prior before becoming a born again Christian, we were doing things riotously. We were doing things anyhow. We were behaving abnormally. We were thinking that, okay, all we just have to do is pray. From morning to night and things will fall in place. Without the consciousness of understanding that there is the mechanism that needs to be put in place. And that is the mechanism of ensuring that our will is in alignment with the will of God. Just like Jesus spoke in Luke 22. 242 he said if thou be willing O lord he said take this cup away from me he said nevertheless not my will but thy will so my brothers and sisters i submit once again to you prayer doesn't cancel anything what cancels things it's your ability the ability of your mind the ability that you put of ensuring that your will says i will do this or i will not do that and then things fall in place am i communicating this morning child of god hear me this morning colossians 2 3 says in whom I heed all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Join me with a Holy Ghost anger and say, My Father, my fight this morning. I ask that you bequeath upon me your wisdom, the wisdom to discern and understand the way to behave, the way to understand that prayer doesn't do certain things, but it's actually my ability to put my mind and my will to ensuring that I have a change or I do things to change the way things are going in my life. That is what I need this morning. Say, pour upon me your wisdom fill me with your wisdom bequeath me with your wisdom i need wisdom to do the right thing i need wisdom to understand that there is something that prayer cannot do what prayer doesn't do my lord and my god fill me with your wisdom fill me with your power Fill me with your understanding. Say, my Lord and my God, I realize right now through this conference, through this teaching, ministering, and preaching, that prayer doesn't do certain things, but it's the power of my mind, the will of my mind that has to be in alignment with the will of God. Just like Jesus succumbed his will to the will of the Father, and he ensured that the will of the Father came to pass. My Lord and my God, Help my will, help my unbelief, help my mind, O oh Lord, my Father and my God. Reconstruct my mind, for you have said it. You say, without your mind, I can do nothing. In Jesus' powerful name, amen and amen. I want to read from the book of Daniel, chapter 2, verse 21. I read, you say, and he changed it. The times and the seasons. He removed kings and set up kings. He gave wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that know understanding. This morning, wielding my apostolic and prophetic sword this morning, I decree and I declare. And I say, every man and every woman that wants to change the times and the course of your life with my apostolic sword this morning, I cut them down in the name of Jesus. Because our God is the one that changes times and seasons. May the Lord change your time. May he set you on speed. Everything that you have not been able to achieve from January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August. Today is the 21st of August. I come man the Lord give you speed I say God Almighty he's the one that changes the seasons may the season of your life change for good may the times of your life change for good may the refreshing time come upon you and I know God is the one that set it up kings and he removed kings every Vashi that has been sitting on your throne every Vashi that has taken in your opportunity I command the Vashi
ask you to be dethroned this morning in the name of Jesus. For those of you who don't know the Bible very well, we're talking about Vashi was the one that was the wife, the queen of King Ahasuerus. The one that had to be dethroned and taken out before Queen Esther was enthroned. Every woman, every man representing or having the spirit of Vashi that has taken over your place of office this morning, that's taken over your contracts, that's taken over your position, that's taken over your opportunities. I command this morning, let them be dethroned. Let them be dethroned in the name of Jesus. I decree and I declare, you shall take your seat. You shall take your place of honor. You shall take your place in that palace. I decree and I declare, this is your season. This is your time. I decree and I declare, your time cannot be controlled by the wicked ones. And I decree and I declare further to you, you shall not beg for bread. I decree and I declare, you will eat the fruit of your labor. I decree and I declare, your health will not fail. For the word of God tells me in Jeremiah 17, 14, it says, heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Save me, O Lord, and I shall be saved. Hear me. There was someone that said, there is a situation with your leg. I want to believe that you have already gone to the hospital and you have taken medication. I did not read it properly whether it is you or a relation of yours. First and foremost, is it an accident? First and foremost, is it something that came mysteriously? If it's something that came mysteriously, I decree and I declare with the unction of the Holy Ghost that is upon my life. I decree as mysteriously as that pain came upon your leg. I have no power of my own, but Holy Ghost say I should speak to you mysteriously. That pain, that wound, whatever it is, it returns back to sender right now in the name of Jesus. I decree that you are healed. I decree that you are healed. I decree that you are healed. I decree wholeness to your body, to that leg, in Jesus' powerful name. And is there any one of you who is also sick in their body, in any part of your body? Lay your hands upon that place right now. Because it's not of him that will it, nor of him that run it, but of God that showeth mercy. Because God is a spirit, and he needs a body to pass through. And I am the body that have yielded unto God this morning for him to do his miraculous work upon us upon the face of the earth so lay your hands upon that part of your body because there's no distance in the spirit hear me child of god it is about your mind are you willing do you believe if you believe and you are willing lay your hand as i make this prophetic declaration i decree and i declare even further for the bible says in the book of exodus 23 verse 25 god says the word of god says there he said thou shalt serve the Lord thy God and he will bless your bread and bless your water and take sicknesses away from you every sickness that is ravaging your body from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet I decree dry up dry up dry up dry up in Jesus powerful name amen and amen and then I want to say one thing when you have been prayed for, just like I have thought this morning, you don't just say the woman of God has prayed for me. You continuously look for a scripture, just like I have, you know, mentioned some scriptures as I've been praying and continue to declare those scriptures over that part of your body. Continuously, you don't give up. You don't shut your mouth down. Remember, a closed mouth is a closed destiny. Everything that is happening to us have an ear. So keep speaking. The prophetic word that I have used, keep preaching it to yourself. Keep speaking it to your situation. You remember Daniel 2, 21. Keep saying it. Say, my season will change. My time will change for good and not for bad. My God will change and remove every man who is sitting on my seat. I will be healed. I will praise the Lord. Am I communicating this morning? God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Hear me, child of God. I want to read out one more scripture, you know, to us this morning, and that is in the book of, uh, you know, First, uh, First uh, John, chapter two, and uh, verse four, and it says, "He that saith and know him, and keepeth not his commandment, is a liar, and the truth is not in him." Very simple scripture. So you can't say I'm a child of God, and you keep doing the wrong things. You can't say I'm a child of God. I'm a daughter of the Most High. I'm the son of the Most High. I keep doing things that are not in the will of God. 
Remember, it's all about your mind and what you exhibit is what people see. Am I communicating? It's not how often you pray, but what you do on a daily to daily basis. That's what shows that you're truly a child of God. That's why God is saying in that scripture, if you don't obey his word, his commandments are his words, his words are his commandment. You don't do what God has commanded in the scriptures, then you are a liar. So you know that you have not been living according to the scriptures, according to the instructions of the word of God. This morning, God has given you an opportunity to have a change. Say, Lord Jesus, say with me, Lord Jesus, I renege from my sinful life. I take on the life of Christ this morning because I believe in my heart that Jesus died for my sake. And I believe in my heart, true and true, that he really died and came upon the face of the earth. And I confess with my mouth that I'm a sinner, but right now I am born again because I've given my old life away and I've taken the life of Christ. And from hence, for Lord Jesus, come and be my Lord and personal Savior. Let the blood of Jesus cleanse me and wash me of all my old life and let me become new again in Jesus' powerful name. Now I am born again. Say that to yourself. Now I am born again. If you have said that prayer, I want to welcome you to the body of Christ. And I say heaven is rejoicing on your behalf. And the angels are clapping for you. And there is a party being put up for you right now. Because you are not ashamed to accept our Lord Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior. But then you have to continue to read the Bible. Study the word of God. And pray as often as possible. And apply the words you read to your basic daily life am i communicating fast as much as you can you know put it into your mind read the word of god because hear me i believe you may have read of this somewhere a bible that you don't read cannot transform you a bible that sits on your shelf that sits in front of your dashboard or at the back seat or under your pillow or beside your bed on the side stool cannot transform you, cannot change you. It is the Bible that you read that will transform you when you open the Bible and you read it. So you don't have the physical Bible. Install the Bible on your phone and begin to read it. That time you used to be chit-chatting and gossiping and looking for those who are naked on Instagram or TikTok or doing some of those senseless things. Use it to read the Word of God. That is how you increase your life. We you know spiritual, you beef up your spiritual life, and that is how your life gets to be transformed. Am I communicating this morning? So, child of God, with that, let us 